Okay, guys, so for this lesson, we're going to be talking about the HMP shunt. Now, if you refer back to my last video about res respiratory bursts, then this, this video will also make much more sense. So the first thing we have to know about the HMP shunt is that what they're talking about with this shunt is that they're just talking about how glucose 6-phosphate is shunted away from the glycolysis path. So as we can see here, we have glucose 6-phosphate just simply being pushed that way towards the HMP pathway instead of falling through the glycolysis path. The second important thing you have to know is that it synthesizes NADPH and ribose 5-phosphate. The third thing is that all of this occurs within the cyt cytosol, and it can be broken down into two components. The oxidative phase, which is irreversible and rate limiting, and then the reductive state, which is reversible. Now, when we look at the pathway, the first thing we can start off with is the oxidative pathway. So we're going to begin with the glucose 6-phosphate, and, and, and this, this is a very simplified path, pathway, by the way. I just wanted to highlight the key enzymes. So as you can see, the main enzyme that's going to be involved is glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. This is a very important enzyme, and that's going to go into ribulose 5-phosphate. Now, throughout this process, NADPH is going to be produced. Therefore, it makes sense that an abundance of NADPH is going to inhibit it. The next thing we're going to have is, now we're going to be tapping into our reversible pathway. So as you can see, highlighted by this arrow, we're going to have ribose 5-phosphate being formed. And that's the second important product. And that product is going to result in nucleotide synthesis, such as purines, pyrimidines. And really it's cool because the structure of ribose 5-phosphate looks very similar to the structure of uh, DNA. So go ahead and check that out on Google. And the next thing that we need to pay attention to is the enzyme transketolase. This is also an important enzyme, as that's what's going to be converting ribose 5-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate by moving around a carbon group. And as we can see, this enzyme requires uh, vitamin B1, also known as thi thiamine. So these two enzymes are important because deficiencies in these enzymes are what's going to cause pathological outcomes, and that's going to be seen during a clinical case later. So now what we can see is what exactly, why exactly are these, why exactly does this shunt exist? Well, pretty much the shunt exists in order to create these two products like I previously mentioned. So what are these products used for? So NADPH is used as a cofactor for fatty acid and cholesterol synthesis, and it's also used, if you look back to my video on respiratory burst, it's used as a cofactor for NADPH oxidase, the enzyme involved that is required in the activation phase to make the reactive oxygen species in order for phagocytosis to occur. And if we think about these, it's also important to know, to think about, okay, so what's going to happen if this is not there? Anyways, back, back to the purpose of NADPH. It's also used as glutathione, it's also used by glutathione reductase, which is also mentioned in the respiratory burst video. And glutathione reductase is used for the neutralization of H2O2 in order to make sure that the cell does not get damaged when there is a uh, reactive oxygen species around. So, so now that we know the functions of these different enzymes, we can, of these di 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 different cofactors, sorry, we can now look into the clinical cases. So G6PD deficiency, now this is actually very high yield because it's actually the most common human enzyme deficiency. Okay? So the first thing we can look at is that the most thing that's going to be highlighted with G6PD deficiency is hemolysis of the red blood cells. Why is that? Because think about it. If you're not going to have G6PD, that means you're not going to have NADPH. And the red blood cells need, need this NADPH in order to reduce glutathione. Because remember that glutathione from my previous video of respiratory burst is required in order to get rid of this H2O2. So if that H2O2 is still there, that's going to cause damage towards the cell and therefore called hemolysis. Now it's also important to know that G6PD deficiency is excellent, so therefore it's going to be affecting males mostly. And we can see on slides that G6PD is dependent, can, can, can be seen as Heinz bodies or bite cells. Now the next enzyme we're going to the next enzyme deficiency we're going to talk about is thiamine B1 deficiency. So as we can see here, transketolase depends on thiamine, also known as vitamin B1. 
And we know that a lot of alcoholics develop wernicke korsakoff syndrome, which is a deficiency in thiamine. So therefore, a lot of these patients who come in as uh, alcoholics actually come in with vitamin B1 deficiency. So that pretty much sum, sums up this video. So please comment, like, like, and subscribe. And have a great day. Good luck studying.